Hi, I'm Jake. This is a table saw sled, and I'm going to show you how to make it right now. Now, the, the basic idea, the premise of a table saw sled is that it will give you uh, reliable, clean, straight cuts across the grain of whatever it is that you're cutting. Now, the material that I used to make this today was just a sheet of 18 mil birch ply. We just had some offcuts lying around. Uh, it's 18 mil thick. You don't want to go too thin because obviously you've got to route out a fair amount of it for the dovetail channel and you still want to leave enough meat in there to maintain some kind of structural integrity. I'd stay away from particle board as it's just a little too uh, chewy in the middle, a little too soft, uh, and that might just cause it to wear down a little bit quicker. The idea of this uh, sled today was to just give a very fundamentally basic sort of operation. So this is the bare minimum that it needs to get to to be able to be utilized properly and efficiently in your workshop. I'm sure some of you are watching this video looking at this sled and thinking what on earth has he done with all these trenches? Now all I can tell you is that you're just going to have to keep an eye on the website and keep an eye on the YouTube page because we over the next course of the next few videos we're going to chuck a lot of attachments on this and this will all make sense. So the first thing that I did uh, was prep a piece of a piece of material for the uh, back plate. Uh, I did that yesterday so that I had time to glue up overnight. It's essentially just two layers of 18mm ply sandwiched together, um, having a little bit more of a thicker, more robust back plate should give it a little bit more of a, uh, a better spine really. Um, it'll also allow me to utilise using the dovetail uh, channels on both sides of it. Now you want to keep these things simple. So the footprint for our one is 600 deep by 800 long overall. Again, you can make it as long, you can make it as short, as narrow or as wide as you like. Uh, but having it at increments of 100 really just makes it an easier, less stress on you while you were trying to work out what you're doing. So all the increments through here are 100 mil as well. So you've got 800 long, so you've got seven increments of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just had to check that. You've got seven increments across, um, so seven spots that you can chuck in at least seven clamps along the grain if you really need to secure your work to the, the, uh, to the sled itself. Uh, and then five going from front to back. So you've got a lot of utilization there. The next step is to start routing out your channels for the dovetail track. Now we started with the microjig dovetail uh, relief cutting bit. It's very important that you make relief cuts as you really don't want to wear out your dovetailing bit uh, as quickly as you will if you just go straight into it. Um, using that relief bit will allow you to remove the majority of the material. It'll put a lot less strain on your dovetail router bit which will keep it sharper for longer. We did the trenching and then we used the microjig dovetailing uh, router bit. Now the handy thing about this router bit is that it's not just a straight dovetail, it also has rounded uh, profile at the base that is designed to mitigate all the tear out that you would normally get from just your run of the mill everyday uh, dovetailing bit. Now the reason we do a dovetail trench is to utilize the Microjig MatchFit Pro system. Uh, it essentially just works off a dovetail profile. Um, so it's very handy, you can use it in any manner of uh, applications and we've chosen that one for this sled. Now once I had routed in the dovetail channel, I had to route in a straight cut at the back end of the sled because uh, once the back plate goes over, uh, there's no way for you to get those vertical uh, dovetail jigs in. So you need to be able to slide them in, slide them out again. Now we also put dovetail tracks into the back plate. Over the course of the next few videos, uh, we're going to utilize those with uh, a couple of stoppers. I'm going to put a handle on the back. Uh, and maybe a flip stop on top as well. It's just to give us an opportunity to add stuff later if we need to. After you've got all of your channels routed, uh, it's time to get the miter bars ready. So the zero play miter bars from Microjig are the ones that we utilize in this sled today. Just in case you weren't aware, we are using mostly Microjig uh, products in, uh, at least in this sled today and in the coming videos as well. Now that was a process of heading over to the table saw uh, assembling the miter bars themselves and then adjusting them so that they fit snug. There's no left to right movement, but they still slide through the miter channel um, nice and smooth. Now the miter bars uh, adjust off a taper. Uh, so you'll see me sliding the, uh, the bar itself back and forth. That just means that as it 
moves in one direction, it either contracts or expands. So once you've got it, so it's sitting snug and touching both sides of the miter channel to secure it and then make, check to make sure that it still slides nice and easily. Now, depending on your table saw, the miter channels might be just a little bit deep. Uh, so I've just used a couple of $2 coins because you know we've all got a lot of shrapnel uh, rolling around in our back pockets these days. If you can get some offcuts, that's handy as well. It's just sort of whatever you've got lying around the workshop. All you want it to do is just be slightly proud of the surface of the table saw. Uh, that way, once you adhere the miter bars to the sled, uh, they won't drop or sink in and they will actually adhere properly. Now attaching the miter bars, we start off with a temporary attachment. Uh, we do that with CA glue and activator just so that it holds temporarily so that we can later drill through the screw holes and then screw the miter bar in itself. So the first thing I did was apply a, little, a couple of daubs of uh, CA glue to the miter bars themselves. I sprayed activator over the underside of the miter sled itself so that as soon as it makes contact it should set off almost instantaneously. You probably want to still apply a bit of pressure for maybe 30, 45 seconds just to make sure that it stays still. Uh, but this is the, at least the easiest way that I could think of to get these started off. Once that's done, we take it over to the bench uh, and using the miter bar itself as a template, uh, we're just going to drill straight through to the, the opposing surface of the sled. Uh, once that's done, flip it back over, um, get another drill bit, so preferably a brad point because it will help you locate the centre. Uh, the washers themselves for the miter bars are approximately 11 millimetres, uh, so don't do what I did and get an 11 millimetre drill bit uh, because your wash will just get stuck and it will be a pain in the butt to get it out again. So probably go for about a 12, uh, 12 millimetre uh, drill bit. Once you drill those holes, uh, ensure that the depth is correct. Uh, you can do this pretty easily by just putting the screw in first, making sure that it screws in and pulls the miter bar in tight. Uh, once you've done that and all the holes are aligned, they're all as deep as they need to be, chuck your washer in, screw it on and that's that. Now we're going to take it back over to the saw and just ensure that it is sliding through the tracks appropriately um, and that it hasn't moved in the process of trying to screw it together. Once the miter bars are attached to the sled itself and you've tried it on the saw to make sure that it's sliding back and backwards and forwards in a parallel and smooth fashion, we're going to go back to the bench and we're going to apply our front and back bracket. Now with the front bracket you want to uh, adhere it, so use your glue, glue it down, screw it down. Because it's not a reference point, you don't need to make sure that it is uh, parallel to the nth degree, you just need it to be on there. So glue and screw onto the front bar, or at least the bar further away from you, whereas your back plate or the one closer to you, just start with two screws, because you'll need to adjust it to make sure that it's cutting square. All I've done with the back bracket is screw in the far left side and then one on the further right hand side, but not all the way to the end. Now the reason that I've done that without any PVA, without any glue, is because I'm going to do the five cut method and make sure that it is cutting parallel. Once you've done the five cut method um, and you're within an acceptable tolerance, uh, depending on how finicky you are about your sled, uh, then you can just go ahead and screw the rest of your holes in and that's pretty much it. So your sled is essentially up and operating. Again, it is just the bare basics. There's always lots of uh, attachments and stuff that you can put on, but that is essentially a functioning table saw sled. That's it for this video. This is just the start of our um, series on a table saw sled. So for more information on either uh, the sled itself uh, or any micro jig products, click one of the links below. We'll have everything down there. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe the page to help us grow. Keep an eye on the YouTube page because again, we'll be doing a lot more of these videos and we'll see you in the next one.